أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم على صلواتهم يحافظون أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون صدق الله العظيم We talked about the first two ayahs of Surah Al-Mu'minun in the previous sessions. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, successful are those believers الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ who are humble in their prayers وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ The third ayah says those who avoid loose talk who avoid weighing talk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayahs is mentioning some description of the true believers, of people of iman, and those who are benefiting from their iman and they are working towards hereafter. Those who would be successful in the Akhirah, in the hereafter. The first quality of those people is that they have faith, they have Iman, they believe in everything that is required to believe in by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The second quality, they concentrate in their prayers and they are humble in their prayers. The third quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned here is وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Those who avoid vain talk. First thing, let us look at the word law. Because this is the word that is used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Law in Arabic language means anything that is useless. Anything that is needless, anything that is fruitless, not necessary that just talk, not only acts of tongue, anything in a human's life that is fruitless, that is useless, that is needless, anything that is futile, no need of it, no benefit of it. No outcome from it. All of that is part of love. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used a small word here mentioning this quality, but this is a very deep thing that explains a lot of beauties of Islam and at the same time responsibilities of human beings in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is mentioning the description of true believers and virtuous people, successful people, people who are working towards the cause for which they were sent in this world for. They are fulfilling the purpose of their existence. Because normally, human beings, unfortunately for some reason, we are going towards a direction where it seems like everything in this world has a purpose and reason behind it for existence and for having it, for owning it, for earning it. I need a home for this reason. I need car for this reason. I need furniture for this reason. Then I need my shoes for this reason. I need a jacket for this reason. I need clothing for this, for this reason. But if you ask the person, what's the reason for your existence? For what reason do you exist in this world? 
What's the purpose of your existence in this world? <coughs> Normally, it will be the most confusing question for many people. And not only this, in many situations, it looks like I exist only to use these shoes and jackets and clothes. Because if I'm not there, who would use them? So my purpose of existence is only to use these things. I exist in this world so that the shoes will mean, will mean something. I will put the shoes into work. This is my purpose. And my purpose of existence is so that this jacket will be used in this world. And more than use, if we look at reality, so that there is someone to keep it clean. Someone to clean shoes. Someone to wash the clothing. Someone to keep the cars and houses shining. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that there is much greater reason for human beings' existence than just these things. And the purpose of hum the existence of human beings is the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after mentioning the ibadah, worship, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who concentrate in their prayers, Right after that he tells us, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Those who do not get involved in useless things, in fruitless things, those who will not get involved in things that have no benefit, no good results at the end. This is, all of this is love. Which simply means, the life of a believer in this world is just like a person who is giving an exam, he's writing his exam. And while this person is writing the exams, if you tell him, listen, there is a nice song that came out, would you like to listen to it? And I'll tell you, right now I'm writing my exam. Let me just finish with this, then I'll talk to you about it. At this time, he has no time to pay attention towards that, those songs, or talk about movies, or talk about having fun during holidays. Because my purpose at this time is the most important thing for me is just to finish this exam. Because my future depends on this. This is a very important time for me. I have only two more hours to go. During these two hours, I have to answer hundred questions that are in front of me. So I have to go through all of these. I want to make sure that I put the right, uh, the right answer for these. I don't have time for anything else. Don't even talk to me. I don't have time to answer my phones right now. I don't have time to look at anything else. People are shouting, playing. I can see a lot of things happening out of the window. I don't care about what people are doing out there. Let me just finish with this exam right now. So at this time he has a purpose and a task to fulfill. He feels that he has been assigned a very important work that his future depends on it. Same thing, a believer. When he looks at his life, he finds a purpose for this life. And he finds a reason for himself to exist. And he sees that there is a long exam that he has to write and he has to go through. فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those whose scale of the good deeds will be heavy, they are the successful people. He feels that I have to really fill it. I have to put a lot of weight in it. In order for me to put weight in it, I have to do my salah, I have to perform my ibadah, I have to do all the things that I have been assigned and I have been as to do by Allah his Messenger alayhi salatu was salam. So this person has a purpose of his existence and he sees a reason for him to exist and he has a task to fulfill in this world. His future depends on this. He feels if he's going to just waste his time and put it here and there, he is ruining his future. So he would like to use this time for his studies, 
for writing the exam. Once he's done with this, then he says, I'm going to think about all the other things. Our future, every human being's future, depends on what we do in this world. And that future is the real future. That is, as soon as we close these physical eyes, and then with our heart we see the reality of the hereafter. This life does not end by a person dying and being placed under the grave, under the ground. When a person is placed in his grave, that is really the beginning of the true life. In this world, this person was only writing his exam and trying to get some of his certificates so that he can do something with his future. As soon as the person is placed in his grave, then that is the time when the real life starts. And that life depends on what this person has done with his life in this world. What did he acquire through his time, his abilities in this world, in this life. All of that would depend on this. So if a person is just involved in lagu, and now I'm sure we understand lagu, anything that is useless. If this person was involved in lagu, in things that are useless, he is not getting any benefit of those things and he lost most of his life for no reason. Someone goes to his workplace. He's supposed to work eight hours. They are looking at how productive this person is, how useful this person is for them. Out of these eight hours, seven hours, he's just looking out of the window. He's talking to people. Then he would like to use the bathroom, then he would like to have his lunch break and eat throughout the time. He's busy with his coffee, with the newspaper. He's standing there watching the TV. After some time, they'll tell him, you know, we are sorry. We don't need you here. Why? This person did not do anything wrong, which means he did not bring anything wrong into that place. It's not that he walked with a gun and started shooting at people. But things that he was doing were useless, were not of any benefit. He was supposed to bring some outcome, some fruit in there. And he is totally useless. They don't want useless people in there. He may say that I wasn't disturbing anyone else. Ask everyone, I did not disturb anyone. That's fine, even if you did not disturb anyone. You were just sitting with your own newspaper. But for us, we don't need useless people sitting over here. We don't need people coming here and then wasting their, uh, their time on our money. And we are paying them for it to come and just read a newspaper here. We are not here for that. We can't afford to do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the same thing. Those who stay away from anything that is useless. The highest level of lahu is things that are sin. Where a person is doing something where he's wasting his time, his energy, and earning sin at the same time. Sitting and watching movies, hours and hours, not only hours, we know it. When people get into it, it's days and months that people are just sitting there. All the free time just goes over there. It's level where they earn sin. So it's not only useless, their time, their energies are totally useless and at the same time they're earning sin. But the lowest level of level is things that are of no use at all, of no benefit at all. No sin. He's not getting any sin. But he's not benefiting anything. What to do over the weekend? Let's sleep for 10 hours. What is he going to get out of it? He wants to kill his time. Let's go to the mall. For what? You need to buy something? No. Just to kill some time. This is level. Useless. The life is just being spent in things that are totally useless. Mu'min is not expected to be like that. A mu'min is never useless. 
A believer is always putting his time, his efforts, his energies to things that will benefit him or others. He is always a fruitful tree. مثل كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء The example of a good word from a believer, not just the complete believer. A good word from a believer is so fruitful. It's just like a tree. كمثل كشجرة طيبة It's like a fruitful tree. أصلها ثابت The uh, the, uh, the tree is very firmly standing on the ground. And the branches of this tree are up in the skies. This tree keeps on giving the fruit at all times. Whether it's winter or summer, there is fruit on this tree. Whether it's sunny or it's freezing out there. The tree is providing people with fruits. This is the type of tree that, tree that is. It's not that in, in, in winter it's totally dry. There is nothing on it. At all times, keeps on giving fruits to the people. So a mu'min is always useful. Where people can really get the fruits of his existence, benefit from having this person around at all times. So there is no love, there is nothing useless in the life of a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his deen, he teaches us how to live as true believers. Through some of these ibadahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, gives us some beautiful lessons of how to make good use of our time. For example, salah. Salah is a simple ibadah where there are so many lessons in it. There are a lot of lessons for us in salah. Salah teaches us to be punctual on our timings. It teaches us not to be totally useless Sunday, what to do, nothing, sleep at night and wake up at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. No, a, a mu'min can never do that. He has to wake up for Salat al-Fajr. Then he has to get up for Salat al-Zuhr. Then he has to worry about Salat al-Asr. So it's not just sleep and worry, don't worry about anything in the world. Or just go for her, have fun and forget about everything. There is nothing like this. Salah teaches us organizations in our life. And then hundreds of lessons in Salah. For example, one of the things we have to do in our life is control our eyes. Through Salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that lesson also. That keep your eyes that place. Just look at the place of sujood. Don't look here and there. Same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us some lessons of making sure that we don't do anything that is useless. For example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, A person who comes for Salatul Jum'ah, and he sits for the khutbah quietly, he listens to the khatib giving the khutbah, and he does not do, falam yalghu, does not do anything that is lahu, that is useless. What does that mean? I'm sure most of us, we know that it refers to playing with anything, doing anything that is not allowed to be done during Salah. For example, if a person starts eating at that time, generally eating is allowed. But at this time during khutbah, if the person is eating, this is lahu, this is useless act at this time, and he lost the reward of his jama'ah. Not only the reward of that moment, not the, only the reward of one khutbah, he lost the reward of the full jama'ah, everything is gone. The person is not eating, he's not drinking, he's playing with his clothes. This is lahu. A person is playing with his glasses. Someone is playing with his phone. Someone is holding a pen in his hand and is playing with it. 
Someone finds small pieces on the carpet and he starts, or threads or things, he starts playing with that. All of this is lagu. All of these things are considered to be useless act at that time, and by doing any of these things, the full reward of the Jummah, everything is gone. This person is not getting any reward of the Jummah. What is this? This is so that the, we, we will get into the practice of making sure that we control ourselves so much that at least for that half an hour, for those 20 minutes, we don't do anything, nothing at all that is useless and that is not to be done at that time. Why the person is playing with his, with his mm, uh, phone for? Why is he playing with his glasses for? I mean, most of the time we fear, we find ourselves, we are just using, doing, playing with these things. For no reason. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this is teaching us these beautiful lessons that don't do anything that is not supposed to be done at this time. If we start getting these lessons and putting them into practice, we will realize that at all times I'm supposed to be doing, every time there is something to be done. If we have time in our daily schedule where we don't know what to do with our time, then really we are spending a useless life. A mu'min is supposed to be organized. Not only just a mu'min. Any person who would like to have some benefit of his life, he's supposed to organize his life. In the morning, I'll wake up at this time. I'll do this, then I will do this, then I will do this. This is what I would be doing from morning till evening. Before I go to bed, I would do this. And there is complete daily schedule for every person for all days, not only for working days. This, this is what I would do five days a week. Sixth day, I will do this. Seventh day, I will do this. This is my complete week. This is what I would be doing seven days a week. This is I'm doing uh, 24 hours a day. This is what I'm doing with my life. A lot of time. When our time is not organized, our life is not organized, we just keep on planning, I'll do this. I will come to you tomorrow. And then, after one week, I will come to you tomorrow. I will start reading Qur'an tomorrow, inshallah. And that tomorrow and tomorrow never came. Ramadan went, and in Ramadan we were saying that. And now it's more than three weeks for Ramadan. And people didn't get the opportunity to pick up the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll do it tomorrow. Our life is totally unorganized. We don't know what we are doing with it. We don't know what direction we are heading to. So everything has to be organized so that all of this level and useless things will remain, will stay out of our life. Otherwise, if life is not organized, then all of these lagu and useless things will start getting into our life. Always remember this. If we, want, we feel that I'm going to make a good use of my life, I will have a lot of use of my time, my energy, my, my strength, my abilities, and we don't organize ourselves, then just forget it. It's not happening. And I will tell you something. By looking at the history and studying the biographies of the scholars of Islam, there were people with great abilities. This is something, always keep it in mind. We find in the history, people with great abilities, their life was not organized, did not achieve anything. People did not have those many abilities, organized their lives, and they did a lot with their lives. They achieved a lot of things in their lives because of organizations. Organization in our life is extremely important. And the best lessons of organization is only in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beautiful organization with his life. You look at his daily schedule, you look how he's doing so many things. There were so many responsibilities that he had to fulfill. But subhanallah, the way he fulfilled all of those responsibilities, 
towards the ummah, towards his family wives, towards his children, towards his relatives, and as Khalifa, as the person, who is, as a ruler, and as a judge, everything, as a teacher. Subhanallah. He was everything in his time. He is the Imam. He is the organizer for everyone. He is the one who's leading the armies. He is the one who's teaching every person. He is the khatib in the masjid. Now he is the he, uh, he is a father in the, uh, for his children. He is the husband for his wives. Not only one. And still we are not able to do justice to her. And still there are so many complaints. So, I mean, all of these things and doing everything so nicely and fulfilling all of those responsibilities in such a way that in the 10th year of Hijrah, when he went for Hajjatul Wada, and he asked people that, Ala hal ballaghtu? Did I convey my message? Did I convey the message of Allah to you people properly? And I taught you everything that I was supposed to teach you? All of them, 124,000 Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, they all witnessed for him that, Naam Ya Rasulullah, Bala Qad Ballaghta. Yes, Ya Rasulullah, you fulfilled your responsibility in the most perfect way. And then he says, Allahumma shahad, Ya Allah, be my witness that these people are witnessing for me that I have fulfilled my responsibility. There wasn't any person during that time who was able, who would be able to say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was supposed to do this for me and he did not do it. He did not fulfill his responsibility. Not a single person was able to say that. Just imagine with all of those responsibilities and not even one person can have that claim. This is organization in his life. Sometimes we get into ibadah and so much into ibadah that we can't do anything else. Then we go into the other things, the studies today, now, this month is month of the studies. Now so much is studies, no time for ibadah. And now all of a sudden the person thinks, you know, I neglected my family. Now from my family. So now he's in the family and now day and night he's just sitting in his room. No organization in our life. We don't know what we are doing with it. So, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us here. Walladhi, as I said, it's just one word, but it's deep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this beauty of this deen, that this deen teaches us how to spend each and every moment of our life in this world. There should be nothing that is lahu, that is totally useless, that has no benefit. But remember, sometime when a person does not have proper information, of deen, then we feel sitting with my family is useless. Oh, I'm wasting my time. Let me go and perform two rakah salah. It's better than doing this. We need to understand what is deen, what is ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us all of these things. And these, everything that was done by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of this is part of ibadah. He used to sit with his wives, he used to sit with his children, he used to play with his grandchildren. All of this is part of that ibadah, that part of this deen. So, there should be no lagu in our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, describing the Jannah, tells us in Quran, لا يسمعون فيها لغو ولا كذابا In Jannah, there will be nothing lagu, nothing useless. You would not hear anything that is lagu, that is useless in Jannah. And Mufassirin have explained this word lahu over there, that it means they will not hear anything that has no benefit, no curse word, no false promises, and nothing, not only this, nothing that has no benefit. They won't hear it in Jannah, because Jannah is free from all kind of lahu, things that are useless. Everything of benefit in Jannah. So even the people of Jannah will be such, that they will be in the habit of just speaking things and saying things that have some good behind it and some benefit in it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa again giving us a lesson 
of avoiding lagu and useless things in our life. Says in a hadith. And the hadith is in Sunan Abi Dawood. Salatun fi ithri salat. La lagwa baynahuma. Kitabun fi aliyyim. When a person performs salah, and after this, he performs another salah, performs zuhr, and then he waited and he performs salat al-asr. Between the two prayers, la lagwa baynahuma, he did not do anything that was useless. He performed two rakahs, two salah, not two rakah, two salah on that day, where between the two prayers, he did not do anything that is lagu, kitabun fi al-lihim, this act will be written in a book that is very highly preserved with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means is an act that surely you will be rewarded for in Akhirah. It will be written in that book where it cannot be erased and it will be saved for you over there. This is that type of act, such a great act, loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just imagine then the practice that he would like to give us that gets used to perform one prayer, and then from this prayer you think you make a good schedule that until next prayer I'm doing something good. <coughs> I don't have a single moment between the two prayers that is useless and that I don't know what to do with. Salatun fi ithri salah. One prayer after another prayer. La lagwa baynahuma. Nothing useless between the two prayers. It will be written in that book that is preserved with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ata ibn Abi Rubah, radiyallahu anhu, one of the great tabi'een, the mufti of Makkah Mukarramah during his time. He says, I saw Jabir ibn Abdullah, radiyallahu anhu, and Jabir ibn Umayr, two sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. Both of them, they were competing with each other in targeting and hunting. After some time, one of them got tired and he stopped. Two Sahaba, they're playing. They're learning, they're practicing targeting. And one of them gets tired and he sits down. So the other Sahabi says to him that this is not being tired, this is being lazy. This is something they learned. So he says to him, this is not being tired, this is being lazy, and you are lazy. And then he says, the reason I'm telling you this is because I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he said, لَيْسَ مِن ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ لَيْسَ مِن ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ لَغْوًا وَلَا Anything that is not, that does not have the dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah in it, its lagu is useless. Except four things. مَشْيٌ بَيْنَ الْغَرَضَيْنِ Number one, running between the two lines, which means uh, uh, having, doing some exercise, where the person is running or doing some exercise, physical actions where he is doing something for his health. So these type of exercises that when people are doing is something that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, this is not low, this is not useless. Number two, ta'dibahu farasa. Training your horse. And we don't want to go into the details of that. But horse was very useful in those days. Number three. Mula'abatahu ahlahu. Spending time with your wife, with your family. And number four. Ta'alimu ras as-sibaha. Swimming. Which is part of... Uh, Exercise. So the Sahabi says to him that these four things are not level, they are not useless. So now when you just got a little tired and you said, you know, I give it up. This is part of our ibadah. This is something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said is not level. So we better, you just better, don't be lazy, get up and keep on doing that. Rather than just sitting and being lazy. Because you're just sitting, this is level, this is useless. Aisha radiallahu anha once, she asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, if a person goes for hajj, there is a lot of reward 
in spending money during the time of Hajj. So, should this person spend his money on people around him, or he should spend it on just giving sadaqat to other people? What will be the best way of earning the ibadah during that, those days, Ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, Tawafu sab'in la laghwa fihi ya'dilu raqabah. The best ibadah in those days is that you perform tawaf and during all seven rounds, you make sure you did not do anything that was useless. You were t- continuously busy in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the, that tawaf. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that you will get the reward of freeing a slave, of setting a human being free. Again, it's a lesson of staying away from lagu and from things that are totally useless and have no benefit. In simple words, a mu'min is expected to live a life where all of his times, his energies, his efforts are being put to some use. And he is very productive. He is doing something with his time, he is doing something with his life. And people are benefiting from the existence of this believer. He himself is benefiting from his time and from his efforts and from the abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted him with. In reality, really, we have so much, so many abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have gifted us. If we just put these abilities to use, we can achieve so much in our life. If we look at our community, a lot of time we find that in communities, people are complaining that we don't have people of this field, we don't have, we can't do this, and these things are stuck because of this. If just a small, it could be a small community, if people will put their efforts together, and they work together towards these things, you see how much abilities people have. But it's only that everyone would like to use his abilities only for his own benefits, personal benefits, that's it. At the end of that, I've worked for seven hours, I worked for eight hours, that's it. Now I'm not going to do anything else. I need to just go home and rest. I need to just sit and have fun. If we put these abilities to work and make some good use of it, it it could be very productive. We, We can benefit from it. The ummah can benefit from it. People around us can benefit from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this quality of true believers that وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Those who stay away from all kind of useless things. Not only this, we find an, another ayah in the Quran al-Kareem where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the qualities of true believers and people, Ibadul Rahman, in, at the end of Surah Al-Furqan, who are Ibadul Rahman, who are the true servants of Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا kirama." When they are passing by anything that is useless, that has no benefit, they pass while they are with honor. They pass with honor. They don't just lose everything over there. They don't just sit with those people. They don't join those people. مَرُّوا kirama. They keep on passing by. They don't join these type of things. And they don't, it's not only uh, that they pass through and they don't get involved. مَرُّوا kirama. They pass with honor, which means this person has something to do with his life. Those people are doing level, useless things. And this person has something to do with his life. So he, the, the, of course, a person who has some benefit of his life, that, that's the person who, have, who is honorable person in this world, that he's making some benefit of his abilities. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا kirama. And we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He always looked at the abilities of people and then put those abilities into the right use. Many times when we see someone doing something, if a person is doing something that we don't like, someone is doing something wrong, right away we start looking down at these, those people. Look at these people, how they are just involved in all of these wrong things. Oh, these, these are criminals. They just, just keep on fighting. They have nothing to do. They are totally uneducated. They are always on the street. There is no benefit of their life. Don't even look at them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, 
you find this quality in him that he is looking at people's abilities and then accordingly he's putting those abilities to right use. Just imagine when he starts looking at his enemies, people who are opposing him, people who are hurting him, and he started looking at who are the people who are able to hurt me the most. And he comes up with the conclusion that there are two people that are very, I mean, they're very effective for the kuffar. And they're doing a lot to hurt us, to hurt the Muslims. One is Abu Jahl and the other is Umar ibn al-Khattab. They both have different type of abilities. He starts making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al-Umarain. Ya Allah, give honor to this deen of yours through one of the two Umars. Umar ibn Hisham, which is Abu Jahl, or Umar ibn al-Khattab. Why is he making that dua? He sees that if these people are putting their abilities for kufr and they're working so hard over there, simply means they're hard-working people. And they have these abilities. All I need to do is just change the direction of their work. At this time, all of their abilities are going against the deen of Allah. If I put it for the deen of Allah, they will benefit the deen as much. A lot of times we see children who are really very playful and they are I mean, they're giving everyone a hard time. They'll keep on arguing with people, they'll keep on fighting with everyone. And normally these children always what they hear is, this is a very bad child. He misbehaves all the time, he is this and he is this. And that makes the child feels gets a feeling about himself that no one likes me and I'm... I mean, I have no benefit being with my parents. My parents don't like me. They always talk against me. My teachers talk against me. My colleagues, my friends, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins. Everyone is talking against me. I have seen scholars, and really those were the people that I feel that they knew what, how to benefit from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they would see these type of children, they would admire them, mashallah. Very nice child. Because they see that this child who's doing all of this, he is sharp. And he's active. He's brave. He has a lot of abilities. It's only because of his childhood, he's misusing his abilities. All we need to do is, now I'm going to work on this child more than I will work on those other nice children. Because they don't have these abilities that this child has. They look at these abilities. He's very active. He's very brave. So I'll keep. We will use these abilities of this child. So this is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us. That these are abilities within human beings. And every human being has abilities. Only if we stay away from lahu, from useless things in our life, and put our abilities to right use, inshallah they will be, we will be very protective. And those people around us who have these abilities, they will be very productive and they can have, we can have a lot of benefit of having those people around. Now, we know it, that a person who is criminal, everyone is afraid of this person. You just change, you just change the field of this person, sit with this person, ask him what is he doing with his life, talk to him nicely, and then offer him something where maybe that use him to be the guard for the neighborhood. Now, everyone is afraid of this person. If this person becomes the guard over there, he will be very nice in keeping people away and keeping other criminals away from doing anything wrong over here. It's the same ability, putting it to the right use. So it's just finding the right use and putting things into the right use. That is the easiest thing, is this ayah. That stay away from love. Teach people how to stay away from love from things that are useless. Teach people how to be productive and how to be beneficial for others. How to benefit themselves and benefit others. And the same abilities, once they start using them for benefiting others, mashallah, these abilities will be great and will be of great help and use. Sometimes, and you'll find it in the history, that sometime when some of the worst criminals were captured, and 
they were offered a job by the king, by the ruler, by the government. It's, there are a lot of examples in the history. When this person really accepted to do some work, right work, and use the same abilities to do the right work, he was very productive. He was very useful. And they were able to achieve a lot by his help. In fact, here within this country, we know that one of the biggest things that is out there is fraud. Bank fraud, fraud in the money, in checks, these type of things. This is one of the worst things that is happening out there and there is no control over it, no one is able to control it. The more they are coming up with ways to control it, the more the criminals are coming up with ways of breaking it and then having more and more fraud. One of the people that was very intelligent in this field, he used to do some fraud with, his, with the checks. And he will just make false checks and cash them out. And banks won't even find out. Even their machines won't find out. Finally, when the person was captured, after some time, they offered him something that a job within the government that here you help us. Because he's so intelligent that he was able to make that and do it in such a way that even the banks won't be able to find out. So now you can you know all the ways of how people would make these fraud. So now you tell us how to break it, how to put a stop to it. And really he came up with solutions where everyone else was failed. Everyone else had failed and he came up with those solutions. So putting these abilities to the right use. This is when a person will stay away from level from useless things. He is not harming others. He is not hurting others. Not only this, he is not even just going to sleep where he is not of any use. In fact, he is putting his time, his abilities, his energy, everything to the right use. He will benefit himself and he will be benefit others. This is lahu. This is when people will learn to stay away from lahu in their life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran that one of the description of true believer is that وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Who avoid all kind of useless things in their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our lives useful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us no fear to make good use of our times, of our life, and of all the abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have gifted us with. And may Allah use our abilities, our times, and all the blessings that He has gifted us with to be, uh, give us no fear to use them for His deen, and for the benefit of the ummah and for the benefit of the whole world at large aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al muslimin wal muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin